16 January 2024 guys all right today today we'll do something different we'll just go through some uh couple couple topics of interest related to uh crypto mining and uh we'll end on something uh sort of related to uh, stuff I've talked about in the past so let's get started so what's going on right now after yesterday's bank holiday we are back in action on the old stock exchange Everything's down about 258 points right here. But, oh, we got Starbucks up, Verizon up. Uh, J&J, all right. Lowe's is holding steady. Most things are red. Most things are red. Let's see, we'll go down to, oh, VLO Energy is down. I think I dumped that for some reason. I don't know. I bought it. I bought this and Coke, so I'm going to remove them from my watch list. I bought them because I saw the Congress people bought them, uh, VLO and Coke. Then I realized I really don't want these. I don't know. It was a stupid purchase, but I got out, broke even. I'm just going to dump them from my list. Here are some of my other ones. Most of these I kind of just watched. I do not own all of these, obviously. It's ridiculous. You only need like, probably your portfolio really should only have a couple ETFs, a couple index funds, and most of those overlap anyway because there's only top seven companies that really basically control and uh, affect the market. They call them the Magnificent Seven, stuff like Apple, Microsoft, Meta, Google. The rest are just kind of followers far behind. So they really call it, you got seven big companies making the market go up and down that are making the profits. It's kind of scary that there's only seven. Uh, yeah, but that's, that's the way it is. Oh wow, Tesla's up 91 cents. This turd, I wish it would come back. Look at that. I needed to come back. I'm down probably about 25% on this thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Lesson learned. All right, let's go. BTC is up. Even with the market down, we're up. Oh, not up from downs. I mean, we're still down 43,100. It was down in the 42s over the weekend and yesterday. Look at that. I mean, it kind of went to a trough. And that goes into some of these news articles. You can kind of see the tone has changed. ETFs make Bitcoin problems even worse. Before it was all, everyone's in anticipation of the SEC approving Bitcoin. Yay, yay, go ETF approval. Yeah, and then here we go. Bitcoin edges higher. Why has it settled back into a, tr into a uh, trading range? Analysts explain, uh, analyst explains Bitcoin sell-off following the ETF launch. Uh, Bitcoin, clo uh, cryptos closer to lottery tickets than investments. Rosenberg, a good old Bergstein. There we go. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Bitcoin traders' eyes support at 40K as ETF. Contrarian, bets prove right. So see how the tone has changed once the ETFs have gotten approval. Everything is now like, oh, ETF's going to bring in more regulation and eyes on spe uh, speculation. And it's already very highly speculative as it is. So that's going to hold the price down. Blah, 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 blah. So it's just funny. When you look at the news, you can see the trends and the narrative. They're trying to make it all seem like all doom and gloom on Bitcoin. And yeah, the SEC hated Bitcoin. They hate crypto. So I don't know what's going on. It's just funny to see the trends. So just pointing that out to you as you read stuff. Again, look at the trends over the week and try to understand what's their motive. What's their motivation here? Are they trying to influence you to not buy, to buy, to sell, to dump? Nobody knows. If you believe in it, buy it. It's your money. Don't listen to anybody on YouTube. Don't listen to the SEC. Don't listen to the Apple News. Don't listen to any of this crap. It's your money. You care more about your money than anyone else. They just want to take your money. Oh, what else? Here's the Fidelity old Bitcoin ETF. I did, full disclosure, I did buy into this. I think I only bought like, I don't know, a few hundred bucks at 42. <laughs> I'm an idiot. You know, probably 40, right? When it opened, I probably got in at 40, 41. And uh, yeah, look at me, big genius. But you know, this has always happened to me. IPOs, Tesla, when it first came out, Coinbase, it comes out, all the hype, all the hype, all the hype, right? All the hype. And then it drops 20% or so. I mean, this isn't drop 20%. Maybe it has. I don't know. Me, bad math. Public math, bad for Jim. Uh, let's see. If I click on that, minus one, and maybe 5%. But 
But uh, usually drops, and then basically, if you believe in it, you want to buy it, just walk away from it for a while. I mean, and then odds are it's going to jump back up. But nobody knows. It could always go down. It could always go up. It could always go sideways and could do nothing at all. Bitcoin Ben still lives on in our memories. All right, let's go. So that's where we're at all Bitcoin. Now let's flip over to the next segment, crypto mining CPU style. Not as good as it's been, obviously, since the Turkey Day. But we're about 461. It's been fluctuating about five bucks. So not terrible, not great. But again, my goal is to make this number over here, the uh, Bitcoin balance, go up. So I had zero. Now I have point zero zero seven eight. I just like seeing that going up. It's not costing me much in electricity. It's like uh, 11 cents per kilowatt hour. So it's not much right now. So why not? And there's not much heat coming off the rigs. It's not making, making much space. It's low maintenance, not much noise. So why not? It's fun. Boom. And I'm stacking little coins. So now fiat wise, that equates to about 337 bucks. Woohoo! But again, that's unrealized gains. I'm not even worried about that at all because it can go up. It can go down, as we just said. And uh, based on that, as we saw, Bitcoin is about 43 again. Yeah. I mean, it's down, but I don't know if you believe in it, buy more. If you don't believe in it, sell. Who cares, right? It's your money. It's all for fun. Very speculative, guys. It's always been that way. It will always be that way. That's my guess. And it's pretty much like gambling. So I do believe in the one article. It's like buying a lottery ticket, but nah, it's more like gambling because it's more real, real, that real dopamine. Oh my God, I'm going to win. It's going to go up, but it usually goes down when you buy it. That's just the way it is, man. That is just the way it is. Join the club. All right, there's that one. Uh, I think that's it about the crypto stuff. Again, you can only beat a dead horse so much. You can see what I'm doing profit wise, and you can see what I'm doing stacking Satoshis, and that's where I'm at on that. Uh, let's jump over <clears throat> to, let's look at this one real quick. This is the old Coinbase GDAT Pro. I think they changed it again. I think it's a whole different website, but they still have, yeah, this is Coinbase Pro. And I think they changed the name again. I'm not a big fan of Coinbase. They were the, obviously the early adopter of the early exchange, but my God, try going setting and linking a bank account to your account and then trying to deal with support on chat. You're dealing with guys from uh, Mawe, India. You know, they can't even afford support in, the, in America. So that always raises uh, eyebrows to me. It's like red flag. Uh, I don't know. Just try to link a bank account. Try to get real customer help. That isn't just scripted, which is boring, doesn't help you waste your time. And uh, my advice is if you're having a problem with the product, you're not getting results, kick the can. Just, you're out. Get out of it. Don't use them anymore. There's other options. I went over to Gemini and I went over to uh, Kraken. No problems at all. Easily set up what I needed. Boom, boom, boom. Did by KYC, know your customer, no problem. All set up. Coinbase, I'm never using Coinbase again other than just use their tools and use up their bandwidth, right? So using up their server speeds right now just to monitor the uh, order books on Bitcoin. It's kind of cool to see this. This is kind of misleading because you may get a sense that it's going up, it's going down. Like here, look at this. Is this today? Oh my God, about 10 o'clock today, it tanked down to 42. Look at this. Look at the volume. <clears throat> look at the volume right here. Volume, boom. This is one of those little candles, as they used to say on Crypto Ben, Bitcoin Ben. The candles, Ricky Candles, whatever that guy's name was. <laughs> Some of like these guys are selling me uh, used cars, man. And then you got this guy right here. And then you got more volume shoots back up. Look at this. It's just bizarre. So volume you got to watch can go either way. Volume can be dumping or volume can be buying. You just don't know. You don't know. You're not a pro at this. Nobody knows. And people are trying to tell you, look at the trends. Look at the ups. Look at the downs. Just walk away. They don't have a freaking clue. If they did, they would be millionaires and they would not be making YouTube videos. Me, I don't even get paid on this channel. I'm not even monetized. I just do this for the hell of it. All right, so there we are right now, holding at 43,000. Let's go on to something different. This is a new site I found. This is related to um, basically tracking salary data and job posts across 5,000 tech companies. And also, this one specifically of this group of websites, deals with the tech layoffs, mainly 
tech layoffs. So he's been tracking tech layoffs since the the uh, beer bug, uh, the fake beer bug back in uh, 2019 or 2020, right? 2020. And then this is a cool site, basic site. It's information. I love sites like this. Just give me the data. Just give me the data and none of this fluff crap. So you got the layoff tracker. This is from last, uh, let's go back to last year. You can go up here. I like it. Clean and simple, buddy. Just here's your widget. Pick your date. Boom. So if you're in the tech field, IT or a software engineer, IT is not software engineering, guys. So if people say you're in IT, no, I'm a software engineer. I do more, you know, you're, you're designing software. You're going through requirements. You're laying it out. You're doing the whole ecosystem. Whereas IT, you're kind of just, I don't know, data management, plug and play. You're not really doing analysis. or that's People are trying to make everything IT, but no. So, but this is tech companies. This encompasses the whole kit and caboodle. Interesting site. So what you can see in 2023, there were 1186 tech companies that had layoffs last year, which, <laughs> oh my God, comes to about 262,582. Now this, to me, having been on both the private and public side, working in the government contracting space, as well as the private space, most of these, I'm going to say all of these are, even though some do have government work, <clears throat> most of these companies are private sector. They don't touch on the government work. So point being, if you're in a tech business, whether you're not doing tech or anything, if say you're HR, you, you are still not immune from being cut. So uh, look at last year, man. Look at the layoffs. Um, my advice, if you're in tech and you're a U.S. citizen, look at going into a defense contractor and working for them. You have to be able to pass security clearances and stuff. So if you have any you know, skeletons in your closet, eh, you may want to pass because they're going to want to know about it. Uh, yeah, they want to know about it. If they don't know about it, it hurts you. But if they know about it and they can deal with it, then you may get cleared and work and make a lot of money making money off the government and the uh, public uh, tax. And uh, yeah, sit back in uh, golden handcuffs time, baby. And that's how I was able to retire at 56. Woo! Yay! All right, anyway, here we go. We have companies. Look at that, you get your company list, your location, and these are from last year, right? And it tells you what that would, uh, the type of industry they're in, consumer marketing, media. You can actually click on the link, and it gives you the source of the news of the layoff. Some of it is actually links to LinkedIn, some is to companies, some is in newspapers. Some actually will show you, uh, they'll show you the uh, actually list of employees that have been affected by the layoff. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, list of employees right here. I'm not gonna click on it. Uh, it is public information, but I'm not gonna click on it. You can go look at it. You want to see Beam Benefits, they dump 74 people. And uh, let's see, there's our list. Here's our coverage. Let's find a decent one here. Let's look for, well, there's Audible. Holy crap, 5% of the workforce on Audible, which is owned by McAmazon. Let's click on that. I'm just going to, I'm going to risk it. It better not be porn. <clears throat> Variety.com, here we go. So it takes you to the resource where they're getting the information from. Audible lays off over 100 employees, about 5% of the workforce, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, amid broader Amazon cutbacks. It's giving you a sense of what's happening to the economy. Do not listen to the mainstream medias, uh, CNBC, stuff like that, because they are pushing a narrative to make you and try to convince you that everything's happy, everything's uh, unicorns and rainbows, keep investing, keep working, blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, the whole house of cards is about ready to probably fall down and everyone's gonna lose everything, man. I don't know, it doesn't look good out there. So you gotta look at numbers like that. Let's go back, I like this site. Let's go back, oh, we got Twitch. Man, I didn't know that was still around. And notice the area too, look at it, San Francisco, San Francisco. San Francisco is, I mean, Jamie Dimon of JP Morgan came out. They have a yearly conference there. He just came out and said, San Francisco is the worst city in the country, far worse than New York. It's just crime, homelessness, crap on the streets. A lot of companies are pulling out of California, San Francisco mainly. Google was to build a huge campus in the San Francisco area. They said no. They just decided to back out of that. Even Google, with their ideologies, don't even 
adopt the crap they basically agree with the uh the uh policies and stuff like that they realize oh crap we can't even live amongst our own ideology so they're realizing we're not going to build here it's just funny it's almost like they're kind of waking up to realize oh crap we can't be like this anymore uh but they won't they will never change they're just looking at the numbers but the uh, cesspool they created they can't even live in it themselves so i think that's pretty interesting let's go down i'm going to show you if we can find something here pitch this is all last year lever San Francisco, man, that is number one. All these companies are laying off and they're probably going to go out because people can't afford to live there and they can't live there and be physically safe in the streets or the area. It's just expensive. You're getting accosted. You're having homeless people fight in front of you in the streets. There's old eBay. We have a story about eBay coming up. Stay tuned for that one. eBay in Tel Aviv. What the? Uh, I go through this site. It is called layoffs.fyi. If you're in any relation to a tech industry, you might want to look at this because if you have not been laid off or you want to see the trends and you don't know about it, you're next. I know you're not immune. They basically want you to take up the work, pick up the slack of people. They cut five people in your team. Guess what? They want you to work harder and uh, guess they're going to make you work another year till you're next and you're gone. So my advice, if you did survive, keep your mouth shut and start looking for another job ASAP or change. Change your career. Go do something else, man. Go into a hospitality. Go somewhere else. Get out because tech is dying. Everyone's laying off. Spotify, 1,500. Oh, these are overseas too. It gives you good trends. Now let's go back up to today. 2024 so far. We're only a couple weeks in. This will spot some trends. So far, we got 48 temp companies with layoffs, 7,500. So 7,528 employees laid off thus far in 2024 let's go back up top yeah discord discord out of san francisco yet again artifact some of these i never heard of robotics that's interesting 100 percent, 100 percent logistics gone boom let's see what happened here i want to see if they shut the doors come on big daddy i thought robotics would always be around because you got to build the skynet machines that uh, I think uh, they're going to put AI into and eliminate the human race. Dexterous Robotics shuts down trailer unloading business. Okay. They just closed that whole office in that area. Wow. Not good. Not good at all. There we got Amazon. There's no percentage on now on Instagram. 60. So good for them. I hate Instagram. It's part of meta. All the social media stuff is just toxic to our culture. Twitch, man, Twitch is, Twitch is not doing well. Uber Freight, what is that? It's just funny. Then you learn about tech companies too. All these companies out there, Lever, is that a soap thing? I don't know. Uh, front Desk. I know Google had a bunch. I'm just not seeing it right now. Checkout.com, eBay, 20, Tel Aviv again. Just go through this. It's very, very informative. Uh, you can also then... Off this site as well, they have another site. If you are in tech, you can uh, visit comprehensive, uh, what is it, .io for a free salary range data from 5,000 tech companies. Find out what tech companies are paying today for any role. This is kind of good information. Now, if you want to get an idea, don't use LinkedIn. LinkedIn is just mining your data and selling it to uh, third-party people to uh, basically harass you. So Here's all in one compensation plan. You can search for free, choose a, choose a uh, uh, job family. You know, it's all the fields, right? Uh, let's try this one. This is kind of what I know. Search for free, bum, bum, bum. Wow, that seems low. I'm telling you, if you, I'm being honest. If you go into the defense contracting, one of the contractors, and you know, how, you know the ranges on the billable hours they're building on the contract, you, they're not gonna tell you because they're trying to make a lot of money off you. You're a resource, you're a human resource that makes them money and they can profit off you sitting in the seat working for the government. That is how it works. So say they're charging, charging the government $100 for your butt to be sitting there eight hours a day. Even though you're salaried, they're billing you out hourly. It's very weird how that, how that works, right? So you're $100 an hour, you got a salary. They compute. They want you to work eight hours, 40 hours a week. 
Booz Allen once did this. They, they were making you work 45 hours a week. You only got paid for 40. The government found out about that and said, you cannot do that. Very shady practices by some of these defense contractors. You got to watch it. You got to be well armed intellectually going in there, knowing the billable rate. So they're going to charge you $100 an hour. The government, they're going to pay you maybe half of that. So 50 bucks an hour comes to 100,000, maybe more. Let's just say uh, 70, 70 bucks an hour, right? And they'll take the 30% of flesh. So you make 70 times 240, which is right on this ballpark. You're getting robbed because you can find really small defense contracting companies under, under say, 30 people. And if you're good, get in there and they'll pay you the almost 99 bucks an hour. They need a buck an hour off to pay for admin stuff, which makes sense. Security people, HR, accounting, blah, blah, blah. They got to farm that out because they're too small to have it in-house. So you got to watch the big box companies. Anyway, enough about that. I can talk more about it. Leave a comment below if you want to know more about getting into that industry and how to uh, get the best pay for what your uh, skill level is and watch out for any company, not just these defense contractors, but private guys too, trying to basically uh, pay you as little as they can because they want to make as much off of you as they can. You're a resource. You're not in the family. Don't fall for the family culture. We're all one big family because they will cut you the minute you are useless to them or you say the wrong thing against the grand poobah cult leader owner. Uh, yeah. Ask me how I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're the, Once they let you off, guess what? They're not going to pay your mortgage. They're not family. And most of the people, 99.9% .9 of the people you ever work with, you're never going to hear from again. They are not your friends. The company is not your family. Stop believing the lie, guys. Stop it. Treat your life, your career, as you being the CEO of your life and your career. You are a freelancer. You're working for them. Sure, maybe a W-2, blah, 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 blah. But you are the CEO of your own business. You always need to be keep networking. Keep, you know, your net worth is your network, right? Your network or vice versa, right? Your network is your net worth. Who you know, always keep looking. Say you take a job, you've been at the job, not even a month, and you get, uh, hey, your friend or former friend or someone reaches out and says, it doesn't have to be a friend, or you know something. You get a call from another job you were actually talking to, and they come back and offer you, say, 175. They offer you more money, or it's a job you wanted to do, and you're at this job. Who cares? Get out of the job you're at now. You, are, you don't have any loyalty to that company, because who's to say they're going to cut you four months down the road? Right, you just started there. You didn't build up any loyalty. So what? You got a better offer, or you got, want, to, want to go to a place you wanted to get into, and they came back late and gave you what you wanted. Take it. Get out. Go what suits you best financially, uh, and make sure it's not a fly by night either. Use a little common sense. Just don't jump into it, and it may go belly up in two weeks, and you just shot yourself in the foot. So entertain it, and maybe take it. Go for it. You're the uh, CEO of your own of your own career. So don't feel loyal that, oh my God, I just took this job. Do I have to stay there? Consider getting out and taking the other offer. Who cares? I did it. I went to a company, stuck me in a little rat hole size cube. It was, I'm like, what is this? This is embarrassing. And then uh, got, a, got a contact, not maybe two weeks later of another opportunity, more money, more interesting work. Man, I just said, I'm done. I left the, the stupid tech recruiter. I, that got me in there. Oh, he got all belligerent. Oh, no, 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 that's not going to look good on you. You're not going to affect your career. I laughed and said, sucks to be you, brother, because he didn't get his commission because I didn't stay 90 days. So he was a little butthurt. And I basically said, well, you should not have lied about the job. It sucked anyway. You misrepresented it. And then he kind of shut up. So, yeah, that's why you got to look out for yourself, man. Be selfish. Nothing wrong with it. Doubt but verify. It's your life. Anyway, I went on a tangent on that, that little puppy. Yeah, so here you go. Look at this site. I can talk more about tech stuff if you want, career-wise. It's all about the money, guys. It's all about the money and maybe the work. Most times you'll find the work you're doing gets shelved anyway, never gets put into production. A lot of these guys go to MIT. They get out, go work at Google and Mountain View, and they end up just changing the, um, wait, after passing the stupid interview process, which is just, oh my God. Don't, let's work on these algorithms, stuff you'll never use. They want you to see your algorithm problem solving skills. It's just a waste of time. It's so stupid. And then you, even if you get in there, right, <clears throat> they just want you to change and work on a project. You're so compartmentalized. You're pigeonholed into one little thing. And you went to a, a freaking MIT 
have a two hundred thousand dollar freaking student loan, and uh, you're sure you're making maybe a box, a couple bucks, but they're they're just having you change the color of a font for like months on end. It's ridiculous. It's a joke. Yeah, that's why you always got to keep your options open if you hate what you do. Oh, so you got the Google thing in your resume? Big deal. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Sorry, no one cares. <laughs> yeah, nobody gives a crap about labels or where you worked anymore. Just what you can do to pro solve their problems for them. Real companies. Yeah. All right. Let's go on. Let's see. Enough of this crap. What is the last story we're going to end on? All right. Let's do this. Oh, this is a good one. Y'all ready? What are we at? 25 minutes. Wow. eBay to pay $3 million after employees sent live spiders cockroaches to the couple. Online marketplace eBay has been ordered to pay up to three million to resolve criminal charges related to harassment campaign by eBay employees who sent live spiders, cockroaches, and other disturbing items to the home of a Massachusetts couple. All right, this is all because this couple put out a newsletter criticizing and pointing out issues that eBay sellers should know about. Uh, the uh, trust and safety group at eBay basically did not like that. So they formed a little criminal, uh, what do you call it? Um, ring, a little criminal harassment ring, went after this couple, uh, did a Craigslist thing, inviting like massive sex parties at the couple's house, uh, did all this stuff, harassment, sent all this stuff in the mail physically, which is you don't do that. Don't mess with the mail, boy. You'll get wire fraud and uh, all this bad stuff will come down to you like the Justice Department got these folks. Uh, they actually went to the town and were harassing them and spying them physically. They put a tracker on the on the couple's car. Almost intimidation, harassment to the max degree. They got busted. One guy's doing uh, 54 months in prison, not just your local county Bubba jail. He's going to prison. And a couple other seven employees who waged a ruthless intimidation campaign uh, have already been handed down felony convictions. Good. eBay. These are eBay. We're talking eBay. This is a big company. Uh, these people that work there, oh my God, I'm glad they, I'm, I, I'm not a big fan of the DOJ because I think they've been weaponized to be a political uh, weapon against, if you don't believe in the right ideology, they're going to come after you. That seems to be one faction of the DOJ, but at least they're doing this, going after bad players at these corporations. Uh, all these people put out, you're allowed to criticize people. They pointed out poor practices at eBay against sellers, which is true. I'm a seller on eBay and it's not fair to sellers. They, they get you on fees. They do not protect you against fraudulent scam buyers. Uh, not a good place to really try to sell stuff. Facebook Marketplace may be better, better, but you have to deal with people in person, and there's always risk with that. eBay is an evil, evil place to do business with. So just be mindful. And then seeing this article brought that all to home, all these bad players. And like with Twitter 1.0, it's always these people in their safety security departments, like Bajaya at Twitter, pure evil. And the guy she worked with. And then now you got these guys at eBay. Pure evil criminals. These guys got busted. But JJ never got busted. She had to go to Congress and get tongue lashed. I'm sure she liked that. But uh, she was just a freaking Marxist. Yeah, not good at all. She wanted to shut down free speech. And she did her best. And then she plays, well, we just thought we were doing what we best. Just following orders. Yeah, I heard someone say that before about 80 years ago. Just following orders. All right. Who is this? There's the couple. They uh, actually, uh, eBay was ordered to pay 3 million schmackaroos. That is the max, max allowable f uh, fine against this type of action. Uh, so these folks actually made out. They got their money. They got their money's worth using eBay. So <laughs> maybe you want evil people to be in these companies to harass you. And in the end, hopefully get paid after putting up with the crap. All right. Yeah. So they, yeah, e-commerce bites. They were threatened to stop reporting on the auction giant. They just uh, reported on the problems with it. And as a seller, I appreciate that information because there are problems with these corporations. When a company like Google and eBay and all these stuff and Amazon don't have direct numbers where you can talk to a person. I've always wondered about that in 2005, six, when all this stuff was starting to come out, these uh, companies, why can't I talk to a person? Because they can't afford to hire the support staff and they don't give a crap about you. So then they hire these people and they go attack you because you're just pointing out problems with their company. Yeah, pretty, pretty amazing times, man. Human nature never changes. If you ever want to know how it's going to go, human nature never changes. No matter what the tech is out there, it's always going to be the same. And a good show that shows that is that Expanse show on Amazon Prime. 
even though you're in the future and you're colonizing the solar system and all this stuff, blah, 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 humans are still crap. You still got human nature. It's, it's just funny. So then apparently the best and brightest work at eBay. And on that note, that is all I got. I just want to do something different today. Go through some interesting highlights, headlines, and uh, what affects me, what I see every day. And, uh, you know, eBay does tie in because I sell my hardware, computer stuff on eBay. And uh, knowing that there's some bad eggs in this company makes you really concerned and actually actually validates your concerns against this, uh, this crappy company. So be warned. It's, a, it's brutal out there, guys. You got cyber, cyber attacks, cyber stalking, harassment campaigns, scams. It's, it's brutal, man. Just keep your head on a swivel. Doubt, but verify. Go forth, do great things, and don't leave the house. <laughs> it's safer inside, man. All right, I'm out. Take care.